Good evening, everybody. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to stand in front of this August gathering who had been talking about obesity for the past two days. Let me know how many of you see pediatric patients here. Can you just raise hands? Only one or two. There are only three hands that have, been, that have come up now. So today I am going to talk about can intervention in childhood obesity prevent type 2 diabetes in adults? This is a very vast topic where I am going to talk more about the prevention than about the treatment part of it. Here, this is a cry of a child. A child wants not to get into adulthood with a disease. He requests all of us to catch him young and he wants us to treat him as early as possible. Type two, the, the objectives are the type 2 diabetes which we see is very commonly seen these days in second decade or third decade of our life. So suppose we catch these children at a very younger age group, so we are going to prevent it and I'm, that's what is my talk is going to be about. I'm going to talk about this childhood obesity, Indian scenario, interventions and limitations. The natural history of type 2 diabetes is by the time we see a child, we have to pick up these things right from the child is born, right from the infancy to the adolescent age group. Whenever it, you see a child who is a little obese or who is overweight, try to correct him, intervene him there only so that you don't go to the next step at all. And then this particular disease give us a huge window period where we have got lot of time to correct it when the child is getting obese. From there he gets impaired glucose tolerance. At this stage only if you correct it then 90% of the chances are there where we are not going to end up with diabetes. We don't want any of our children or any of our children suffering from any of other diseases like diabetes or hypertension or metabolic syndrome and all. The chron this is a chronic preventable public health problem which is a non-communicable disease and 90% of them are, can be prevented. What are the causes of non-communicable diseases? Industrialization, socio-economic development, urbanization, changing age structure, changing lifestyle and obesity and sedentary lifestyle. The evolution as we see the human being has come from a different stages. Similarly, the diseases patterns have also changed. There are a lot of microscopic and macroscopic environmental changes which are taking place right from the genetic factor to the adulthood also. So the genesis of this factor are multifactorial, in utero, genetic, cultural, environmental, and psychological. So these are, there are two factors in this. One are non-modifiable factors where we can't do much about it. Others are modifiable factors. In the, among the non-modifiable factors are the age, gender, genetics, race, ethnicity, where we can't do much about it. But the modifiable factors are in our hands as the custodians of health as we are going to treat the patients, whenever you see any patient, whenever you see any child coming or any adolescent coming, try to correct him at that stage only rather than allowing him to go into the second stage and then suffering with the disease. So these modifiable factors are behavioral, biological and societal. In the behavioral factor we have got diet and physical activity which should be encouraged which is going down nowadays and biological obesity, dyslipidemias and societal or socio-economical, cultural and environmental. Just now Dr. Makar has defined obesity as uh, different stages for Caucasians as Indian and Indians. But obesity as a pediatrician, I would define it a little different way. Obesity is defined as a BMI at or above the 95th percentile of age for weight and it is sex specific. We have got different chart for the boys as well as for the girls. So whenever we see a child who <coughs> is between a BMI of 5 to 84 percentile, he is considered to be a normal weight child. Any time you see a child going between 84 to 90, 85 to 94 percentile, these are the ringing bells where we have to be a little more cautious and try to correct it at that stage only. Don't allow him to go it to 95th percentile also. Then the obese is 95 to 98 percentile and severely obese is 99 and above. 
the clinical period predicting adult, adult obesity. So these are the clinical periods where we can predict when the child is going to become obese or when is he going to be a normal weight child. Prenatal, where we have to take care of the mother, he, she has to be well-fed, environmental issues should be taken care of, the micro and micronutrients should be taken care of, and she should be prepared for conception and then for the delivery. Then second comes the intrauterine exposure where close monitoring has to be done for the mother, where the child's weight and the mother's weight should be going hand in hand and they should be appropriate for the term of the pregnancy, for the age of the pregnancy also. And when the child is born, the child should be of the normal weight, neither low birth weight nor a higher birth weight. If the child is more than nine pounds, we suspect this child is going to cause problem and we have to be a little more cautious and more careful to see that this child should be brought back to the 85th, 84th percentile. The second, other period is adiposity rebound period, which is between five to eight years. In India, most of the parents have a tendency to compare their child with the neighbor's child or their friend's child. What he eats, what he does, they are more bothered about, than, uh, about them than their own child. So coincidentally, five to eight years is a period where adipose tissue deposition is more in children. Normally we see a child when he is born between one to two years, he is normal and all. Again, he starts losing a little weight between two to four years. Again, five years, he starts gaining a little more weight. So that is the period, again, it has to be caution, checked, activities have to be improved, and he has to be brought back to the normal way. Then comes the adolescent period where most of the adolescents are uh, a little more stubborn, they don't listen, they have got their own pressures, and they are more independent. And the peer pressures are more, so that's why they are not, not into our control at all. So obesity in 2013, 42 million children under the age of five were overweight or obese, and 157 billion children all over the world had impaired glucose tolerance. Now imagine the state of affairs which we are going to face in 2025. At that time, we are going to get almost about 420 billion children or adults who will be landing up with metabolic disorders. And unless, as custodians of health, as caretakers, if we don't act now, then we are going to have the whole of the population suffering from diabetes and we are going to just treat diabetes rather than do any economic uh, work in our country. The prevalence, as shown by Dr. Anup Mishra, is very high in urban population than the rural population. And the studies were done in the private schools and the government schools. The private schools showed a higher the burden of obesity in the private schools than the government schools. And the high socioeconomical groups where urban people were having more of obesity than the rural people. In a recent study which was conducted in 38,000 children across five Indian cities, it was found that 14.4% were overweight and 2.8% were uh, obese. Further, abdominal obesity was found to be a little more in girls than in boys, and that's the reason why we are seeing more of PCOs in girls and rather than other complications in the boys. The disease burden is going to be very high, almost about diabetes is going to increase by 170% in the next 20 years. In a study done by, again, Anup Mishra, the in New Delhi, almost about one in 10 persons in Delhi is a diabetic and one in five of Indian who is staying in America is a diabetic. So childhood obesity, what are the causes of childhood obesity? Limited access to healthy and affordable foods, greater availability of high energy dense foods, increasing portion sizes, all attractions are there. Suppose you take one pizza, you get one cool drink with that. So children are attracted with that. You don't have enough of playgrounds. You don't have proper uh, activities in the schools and all. Parents don't encourage. Parents don't have time. Whenever they come back, both parents are working. When they come back home, they get some packet for the children. Or <coughs> the child has got an access to the shops and they buy their things. The bills are paid monthly by the parents so that ch uh, adults don't feel guilty because they are working these days. So to cover up their guilt, they are pampering their children and incentives are given in the form of food rather than other things. So all these things have to be cut. So this, all these are leading to syndrome X where obesity, insulin resistance, high blood cholesterols and high blood sugar is there. Nearly about 35% of the general population and one fourth of the adolescent population have syndrome X which predicts diabetes and 
cardiac diseases. So we have to intervene and intervene at all stages, not just at one stage only. The interventions can be of behavioral therapy and pharmacotherapy. In behavioral therapy, we have diet, nutrition, activity, exercise, stress, toxins, environmental pollutions. And behavior counseling is also very important where the counseling has to be done to the child as well as to the parents because parents are more stubborn, they are more non-receptive than children. The younger children are more receptive than the adults. So target groups are pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, lactation, infancy and childhood. In pre-pregnancy, the mother has to be a healthy mother before she conceives so that the environment is good she delivers a healthy baby. During pregnancy, we have to monitor the weight accordingly. Lactation is one of the important periods where most of the women, most of the pregnant ladies, they don't want to feed children for more than three months. This has to be encouraged for at least six months to one year, as long as they can, even milk banking can be done. And it has been shown beyond doubt, a child who gives mothers breastfeeds, that the the rates of obesity and diabetes are lesser in those children rather than the other children. And second thing is in the mothers who have had their cultures, who have given the traditional food, as India has got a lot of huge culture, if you continue to give our cultural foods and all, in that case also obesity has been found to be a little lesser than the uh, non-culture foods. The fetal origin has shows by the Barker's hypothesis, I will not go into depth of it, same thing about the mother who is a small mother, young teen and getting into a pregnancy, uh, giving a low birth weight baby, again the child, this vicious cycle continues. The New Delhi cohort study set up in 1969, this study is still going on for almost about 40 to 42 years and in this study it was shown beyond that when the study was started only 1% were obese and most of them were undernourished and just see how things change. This, in this, after 29 years, 10% were obese and 4% were already diabetic, and at 36 years, almost about 23% were obese and 10% were diabetics. So by the time we detect diabetes, by the time type 2 diabetes is detected, the patients already have got mic micro microvascular changes taking place in their body. So the cohort study had uh, weight and height measured frequently during their growing years. This enabled detailed analysis of the growth patterns associated with adult disease. In the Maharashtra, thin fat newborn phenotype resembles the adult phenotype where low muscle mass, central obesity, adiposity, that is thought to be partly explained the high diabetic risk in Indians. Another study was done by Krishnaveni where pregnant women were studied. In this, there were about 6% of the people who were having gestational diabetes and when the children were followed for almost about 10 years, it was found that these children were having more adipose tissue and the insulin concentrations were a little higher in that. An intervention program entitled Medical Education for Children, Adolescents, for Realistic Prevention of Obesity and Diabetes and for Healthy Aging, conducted in three large cities of North India, also showed when intervention was done, the obesity rates have come down and their levels were also reduced. The sub-study known as knowledge and practices of children, more than 2,500 children were done in the age group of 8 to 11. This study also showed when intervened at this age group, they were more uh, acceptable at this age than the children from 13 to 18 years because adolescence is a little stubborn age. This age group is a little more accommodative and they listen a little better to us. And in higher improvement of CAPS was recorded in children studying in the government schools rather than the private schools because they are more pampered. In another study of 15 to 17 years old children were researched in two randomly allocated schools and they were followed up for more than, almost about six months to one year. In these children also, when they examined their hip waist ratio and their adiposity was checked, it was found that their healthy habits have improved as well as their obesity has reduced. So long-term study weight outcomes from the set of these studies between eight to 12 year old in a multidisciplinary obesity clinic setting generally maintained or improved weight-related treatment measures for the majority of the patients. The limitations of this study were, it was not done in two to five years of age group because of the availability of the uh, cases and uh, other parameters. Now, the most important thing which I would like to stress here is about food is not everything in life. Food, diet should be like medicine. You don't, don't eat 
overeating and all, then you get all problems. So because of the industrialization and the economically stable conditions, we are spoiling our children and getting into the problem. Improving micronutrients is very important. Try to give them the better food. And this is a food pyramid where you should get cereals and breads, fruits and vegetables should be increased. And fish, meat and other things, oils and all to be coming on the tip of the pyramid. The healthy plate should contain almost about 30% vegetables, 20% fruits and 20% proteins. Now, the most important part is activity. What is the activity we are going to uh, ask for the children? In the age group of two to five years, the child should have, be active for almost about three hours per day. Activity can be any form like skipping, hopping, jumping, climbing, gymnastics or any other activities. Six to 11 years, playing, riding, bikes, swimming, gymnastics, but don't allow the child to sit for more than two hours per day. Don't, don't go into the kitchen and then ask, give the remote to the child and ask him to see any program and then give them food while watching TV or force, uh, forcefully feed him while watching. Because the mother always wants the child to get something in the stomach rather than seeing what he's getting in the stomach. And 12 to 18 years is again a very crucial age where they are stressed out with their academic performances, their growth and development, and again their obesity also adds up to their injury. So healthy weight goals for a child and adolescent are two to five years. Try to keep the child less than 85th percentile. If the child is getting more than 95th percentile, reduce the weight by one pound per month, not more than that, and bring down to 85th or 84th percentile. In six to 11 years, if the child is eight to 85 to 94 percentile, try to get them to 85th percentile. And if they are more than 99 percentile, the weight loss should not be more than two pounds per week. And this applies to same as 12 to 18 years also. The physical activity has to be encouraged. We, I have started a small center for ch called Children's Gym. This we have started looking into the children. When we see children coming in, every fourth or fifth child was a little obese. Then I got an idea, then I said, okay, why not start it? And we started evaluating them. We, we looked in for their, I, I bought a DEXA also for this. And when we did the DEXA, we found the fat mass was a little higher than the lean mass. And we did a scan, we found fatty livers in these children. And these were quite obese children. And when we started working, there were a lot of PCOs also in this. And when we started doing this, we are finding a lot of changes in these children. And most of the children have got back to their normalcy and their periods have become regular in PCOs. Their fatty liver is getting back to normal. So what I intend to tell everybody is try to catch the child as young as possible in infancy, in childhood, during adolescence. Don't let him get into the adulthood with a disease and adding the burden to our country and to ourselves where we can't see our children suffering from multiple problems and complications. These are all preventable uh, aspects. We can always, it is in our hands, whenever we see this, try to act on that. Normally the norms are a chubby child is a healthy child. G is beneficial for growth. This is very common because in all the villages and all, they just take out ghee and then add up into the children. They keep it for the children or the pregnant women, which is not required. A normal limited quantity is enough, but don't put on, uh, add on uh, adding ghee and make them fat. Priority for academics at the cost of playtime. It has been shown that children who are more active perform better in their academics than children who are just studying at home. TV and computer should be discouraged. Don't give them cell phones and laptops in the hands of the children. Being obese as a child increases likelihood of being obese as an adult. Obesity in adulthood leads to obesity-related complications. This review age-related consequences of childhood obesity outlines the evidence of our childhood obesity as a predictor of adult obesity and obesity-related disorders, thereby emphasizing the importance of early intervention to prevent the onset of obesity in child, from childhood to adulthood. So my only take-home message to all is early intervene the child whenever you see a child is a little obese try to catch them young right from the infancy and then act on it 
involve them into activity, educate your parents. In fact, now it is we have started a new program, Indian Academy of Pediatrics. They, we are taking classes for the parents, not for the children, because children are more receptive than the parents. Because parents, they don't listen, they go into the Google, they look for all unnecessary things and then they act on it. So instead we are educating the parents who are very resistant and then encouraging them for exercise and physical activity. Diet has to be a good diet, which has to be more nutritious, the complex carbohydrates should not contain more of fats and saturated fats and reduction of TV time and computer time. So this is my take home message and I request all of you to carry it forward even though you are not pediatricians but whenever you see any uh, obese person try to give this message and see that we prevent this in the future generations. Thank you.